Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, our guest of the day, Ed Balls, is obviously a twinkle toes on the dance floor. But he did have a career before Strictly Come Dancing. <laughs> that all came to an ungraceful end in May last year when he lost his seat, of course. In his book, Speaking Out, he considers his and Labour's defeat and how the party might regain power. We'll be discussing that in a moment. But first, a reminder of Ed's glittering political career. Well, for years and years, they say that money has been... The root of all evil to a lot of men But if you ask me to have my pick I'll take the money, you can have the chick I'm gonna have myself a ball Gonna have myself a ball Gonna have myself a ball But sure don't know when you got to go coming weeks and months more united have a ball cause you sure don't know when you got to go hope you enjoyed that joining us now is oh, the journalist broadcast and prominent supporter of jeremy corbyn paul mason welcome to the daily politics Great. first of all though to you ed balls did labor lose in 2015 because they weren't radical enough or because they weren't trusted enough on the economy i think in the end what happened was um, that people saw the, the opinion polls being very close. Uh, they were worried that the S&P was going to hold the balance of power. And there was lots of speculation about how Ed Miliband would be if the S&P were, uh, were deciding the budget. And in the end, there were lots of voters in my constituency and around the country who may have voted Liberal Democrat in 2010, who thought about voting UKIP, who switched back to the Conservatives because they were fearful about a Labour government on the economy. The right. idea so they weren't they... trusted on the economy? Yes, but the idea that they were voting for the Conservatives because they wanted Labour to be more left-wing is just, just uh, nonsense. Right. Well, that's obviously for the birds, Paul Mason, that the idea Labour wasn't radical enough is why they didn't win. No, and I think... Uh... Ed's book is, is really interesting because, for me, it marks the beginning of the centre... Oh, I call this centre-left in, 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 in Labour, beginning to draw an account of why it failed. Uh, and that, that last-minute flip of Lib Dem voters or could, people solidifying around the Tories over Scotland is one thing. But you know yourself, from Morley and Outwood, you know, formerly Normanton, long-term decline of Labour vote, split to the right with UKIP, split to the left, arguably, with the Greens, politics fragmented. Mm -hmm. And my argument would be that any Labour leader, whether it's Owen Smith uh, or whether it's Corbyn or some future person, has to have a narrative. And my observing it as a journalist then, covering it for, for ITN, it was the absence of a narrative. Uh, I think any narrative is better for Labour. Are you saying they didn't have any narrative at all? Well, they had a narrative, but the, the problem was... It, it, what Ed, was the narrative Ed, in your Ed, mind? Ed Austerity Miliband, light? Ed Miliband thought you, won, thought you win elections through policy. And one of the things I've been saying ever since the 2015 elections, you say it, but you win them by having a story to tell. Working-class people in places like Normanton and uh, Leeds is 
a story to tell them about how their lives get better. And I, I really would, anybody who comes to Labour with a story to tell, how to bring these fragments together, the Greens, the ex -U the UKIPers, the, the, the Tory switchers, that person can put Labour back in power, I believe. Right. I mean, you failed then, in a way, to counter the Tories' argument that you'd crashed the car and you'd maxed out on the credit card. You admit that? I think in the end, the overhang of the financial crisis was very substantial. We debated for a long time how mm. to deal with the economic argument. And you couldn't agree, could you? Well, uh, I think uh, it, um, Ed and I agreed that matching the Conservative plans would be ridiculous. But I also felt that to go out and do a big spending paid for by borrowing argument when the deficit was still high wasn't going to work. Actually, at the beginning of the election campaign, all the George Osborne attacks on us that our sums didn't add up weren't really registering. But in the end, in that final period, that, that SNP fear was very powerful and it exposed questions about us on leadership right. and on the economy and on uh, vision. The fact is that Morley and Outwood was a new seat. It was a very marginal seat. It had a very small majority. And you cannot win Morley and Outwood unless you persuade people who might vote Conservative to switch to Labour. And I think, I think probably where I disagree with, with Jeremy Corbyn and with Paul is that Paul thinks he can put together a rainbow coalition on the left and with the Greens. I don't think that works. You've got to reach into the centre ground. Mm. You can't simply be satisfied that you've got a cheering mob of your supporters at a public meeting and think that translates into votes in the ballot box. You've got to get into the centre ground. And at the moment, Jeremy's is that, not is doing that. Is that what you're doing? The Labour's members, let's not call them a mob. Uh, but, yeah, I, I would agree with you that the, the left alone Obviously, you can't, I mean, Labour can never win other than being a, an alliance. Now, the big problem with Scotland, let's, let's set that one aside, but let's think about England and Wales. I think how I see politics, I don't know how Corbyn sees politics, I, I support him, I, you know, you know, I, I, I'm not privy to his every thought. But you support his style of politics and you support yes, the policies he's espousing. But the way I think about this is not centre and left anymore. It is about what is the, natu what is the, what is the heartland of Labour? And I think under... New Labour, what began to happen, it's very clear in 2015, is the heartland is the urban salariat and the swing voter is the working class person in places like Normanton, places like Lee, where I come from, which we which can no longer take for granted. So I think the only thing we can offer them is economic radicalism. Right, but what, but left ec right. right, well, it is left, though, isn't it? It's left. If you think about the sort of things that you are deciding, you disagree, didn't you, with the decisions that were made by Ed Miliband and Ed Balls at no, the time? No, actually. Um, at the time, and you would have liked to have more money spent. No, no, I, no, exactly. I mean, you know, believe it or not, the Corbyn movement is is a coalition of people who radically disagree with him, and and people who just basically had criticisms of of you. And, and let's think about it. You could have gone into well, the there quite a lot of them call me. Um, a neoliberal conspiracist well, and a Tory. And actually, well, that's kind of slightly odd, really. It's clearly I've wrong. It's clear, I have never done that. But, look, you know, th what you, you did face a choice going into the 2015 election, and that was over how you framed the, the, the austerity debate. The, the IFS and the Green Budget made it fairly clear that you could have gone into that, that, that election basically saying no further austerity. And I think it all, you almost did, but you packaged it as a kind of responsibility thing, mm -hmm. fearing what had happened in 2008, rightly, because we didn't mess up. what happened in the election, which which is yep. that in the end, people wouldn't trust us. Right, well, let yep. me just put this to Paul Mason, because your words were, there's a hard-left utopian fantasy devoid of connection to the reality of people's lives and the need to make tough decisions on tax, budgets, immigration and welfare. That won't win an election. Well, what is amazing about being in the Labour Party at the moment, and I hope you agree with this, Ed, is that the influx of people we're having are exactly those ordinary people who we need to tell the story to. And what we're seeing is mums on estates becoming activists in the Labour movement, which is an amazing thing. We couldn't fill 50, a small hall with 50 young people in the 80s. Now we're seeing tens, hundreds. And but that, is what that we still need to going do... to be the wider electorate that can win an election? Well, well, they can be the ambassadors onto the doorstep for a message, which, I mean, your book is full of examples about how bombarding working class people with messages didn't work. But above all, they can be the listeners. Sure. I, want to, I want to hear what they want us to do. Right, but you just called them a mob. I mean, are they amazing or are they I a mob? I thinking of a large group. I, I, okay. I, I don't mean mob in the sense of, you know, a political mob. So, I, you know, if mob's the wrong word, I apologise no. for that. Do you think Jeremy Corbyn can win um, the next general election? Uh, uh, Jeremy Corbyn won the leadership election he's brought in new members if Which that was translating mm. into strength in the opinion polls and a chance mm. of winning the election I'd be the first to tune mm. I'd have to say I was wrong unfortunately that that isn't happening mm. in the end um, to leave NATO may be popular at the public meeting but it is absolutely not where the center ground center-left voter 
is. I'm afraid they're, they're just not going to come there. But you didn't I win the 2015. You didn't win the data. Right. Well, but, well, that, but was that, that was the suggestion. Well, well, I'll come on to that just a bit. But the thing is, you and didn't the win the election with, either, did well, you? Yours and Ed Miliband's I agree. Um, brand of politics didn't either. So people will say take, but if, maybe this will work. But if you take the issue of um, immigration, for example, and talk about Morley and talk about Leeds, yeah. one of the things I say in the book is that globalisation brought big changes which the left has found hard to deal with. One is the unexpected huge scale mm. movement of labour. Mm. My view is you can't win in Leeds or in Morley unless you say we're not going to shut the borders but we're going to manage and control mm. this. Jeremy said the weekend before the, the referendum we have to accept free movement, we can't have a cap, it's got to be basically unlimited. That isn't where the voters of Lee or no, Morley I, are at I, all. I, I actually agree with that. Weirdly you'll find, I mean before you may, if you look at social media I was supporting you yeah. in that debate. Before, before. Do you think you Jeremy Corbyn is doing a good job in his role as leader? I mean if we look at Prime Minister's questions He's yesterday. He's had a slight local difficulty um, to deal with. Right, yes indeed. Whose no. fault's that? Well, uh, Owen Smith stood. Uh, people stood down. I mean, look, it's their right to do that. Yeah. But what they have to re what they have to bear in mind is that maybe not the whole of the tanking in the polls. The tanking in the polls is real. It wasn't happening at the beginning, right. on the 23rd of June, it is now happening. Right. Some of that has to be down to the disunity. Some of it clearly has to be down to Corbyn. He yep. is the leader. Mm. But what I would say is, look, politics is sequential. There will be a vote. I understand that you know, the polls are saying oh, Corbyn is outpolling Smith in, his, in Smith's mm. constituency at right. the moment. Now, it is, it is likely Not to win. Members. As, yeah, as long as, as long as it's a democratic vote. After that, let's take it sequentially, right. like we did with Ed Miliband. Should there be Let's compulsory reselection of those MPs who will not back him? I'm into, you I'm called in, for that. I'm into trade-offs at the moment. I think if the Shadow Cabinet insists on being elected and insists on winning that through the conference... Well, that's what used to happen, of stymieing course. ..stymieing Corbyn, uh, in, in, then, then uh, we on the left can come forward with our uh, measures. But what I hope happens... Including compulsory reselection. Yes. Oh. Be, but what I hope happens is that in the future, after the election, whoever wins, and I've pledged this, and a lot of Corbyn supporters will, mm -hmm. if Smith wins, good, let's unite behind him and let's fight the Tories. Because I you just, admit the polls are disastrous at the moment, they're aren't bad. they? No, look, actually, weirdly, there's a weird thing, I don't know if you noticed, the YouGov poll shows Labour doing not bad among C C2D mm. voters. Right, but overall... It's doing terribly over, among right, ABCs, okay. and its membership is largely ABC. And could you win a chart. general election from that base? I think you, Labour could form the next government, yes. You do. Right, in terms of compulsory reselection, should that happen? Because but, otherwise there isn't going to be unity. If there are elections to the Shadow Cabinet and, you know, the moderates, let's just call them that, uh, for ease of semantics, are uh, elected or they top the polls of the Shadow Cabinet and the first thing they say is, I'm afraid I don't have confidence in, in the leader, Jeremy Corbyn, assuming he wins. Every MP goes through a reselection process in their constituency anyway. I went through it twice when I was an MP. If the party wants to get rid of an MP and have a new candidate, they can already do that under the rules. But in the end, you have to ask the, uh, this question. Is the MP there simply to be the representative of the members or do they have a responsibility to win voters across the whole constituency. Of course the members are also voters, but they're a small minority of the voters in the constituency. The thing which worries me is I fear that Labour at the moment is becoming a party around Jeremy Corbyn, which thinks strengthening its base in opposition is sufficient. Mm. And I don't think mm. that in the end is, is good enough. We need an opposition which wants to be in government and the reason why many of the MPs are so worried is because they don't think at the moment that's even what Jeremy's trying to achieve and Paul's gonna have to persuade us Jeremy actually wants to be Prime Minister before he's going to have a chance of winning a general election I'm just not sure he really wants it or even that's the project's aim at the moment. Alright let's leave it there.